Welcome back to The Breakfast. Uh, moving away from uh, talking about ASU now, another big story that has made the headlines in the last 24 hours is the increase or increment in electricity tariffs by the NERC. Uh, Nigerians, of course, have reacted angrily, mostly, across the country and across social media. And uh, we've invited this morning Mr. Gulahon Lujide uh, to join us. He's an economist to share his thoughts on this increase and what it really means. Good morning, Mr. Lujide. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Thank you Thanks for joining, for joining us. us. All right. I'm going to start with, you know, you know the, the, what, what this really means for Nigerians. Let's start there. Um, it's barely a few months after the first increment. People complained there was, you know, threats of a strike by, you know, labor bodies. The government gave the, you know, order that it be suspended for about two weeks. It was suspended before, you know, we woke up in the morning. It was brought back again. And now there's another increment. How does this, you know, really, really sit, you know, with Nigerians? Um, it, 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 it's a tough situation and uh, definitely is going to increase the cost of living in, in Nigeria, generally. Um, having said that, I also like to make some comment um, from a reportage point of view. Um, you had a report that said, oh, it was increased by 50%. There was another report that said, oh, but if you move from two to four, um, then that is 100%. It is not uh, 50%. I think the, the first place to start is a correct reporting. There is nothing like either a 50% or a 100% increase because there are five different bands, or maybe even more, of electricity tariff. And they are not increased at the same rate across those bands. In fact, the last two bands, which I think is uh, maybe band D and E, D and e, yes. are not even in Greek at all. So it is important to state that correctly. Okay, band A is increased by this much, band B by this much, C by this much, D and E not increased at all. That reduces even the panic in the system. Then we now talk about, okay, for those that have been increased, what are the implications? Of course, increased cost of living. Should we increase it? Is the timing right? Is it not right? Those are other discussions we can have around. Yeah, but, but is this, you know, like people have described, is this insensitive or inevitable? I, I don't think insensitive is the right word. Um, in, in, in my opinion, um, government has not done enough as far as educating the public about how that space works. Number one. Number two is that um, we, if we're going to go along that path, we may as well also consider some other things that will cushion the effect. Here is it. If we say we remove the subsidy from electricity, um, electric, there's a template for arriving at the price of what electricity should cost. So one of the inputs, just for simplicity, one of the inputs in that template is the currency exchange rate. What that means is that at any point in time when it is due for a review, if that currency exchange rate has moved from, say, 300 to 350, automatically we will be expecting an increase in electricity tariff. That is what it means. And it is important that we understand this. Yes. Otherwise, the temptation is to say, let's go back to the subsidy regime and let's go back to how NEPA has been for the past 40 years. It's always an option. But for me, I think we need to move forward, not go backward, and look for other ways of cushioning the effect of the rising prices on the populace. Hmm. We'll delve into just how much this electricity tariff will affect the cross-section of Nigerians. But I'd like to mention that I appreciate you making that distinction because uh, the Minister of uh, Labor and uh, Employment, Festus Kiyamo, did clarify that, according to him, it was not a hike, that what they simply did was to adjust the bands, freeze certain bands, you know, because the bands are A to E, and to adjust it such that some people who are not paying what they, so that such that people 
people would pay what they should be paying. But let's look at uh, the reasons for this. I mean, they gave a plethora of reasons why the NARC is increasing the tariff. They say there's a 14.9% inflation uh, rate in November 2020. They're saying that uh, the foreign exchange rate of 379 naira to a dollar uh, as of December 29, 2019, uh, 2020. They're talking about available generation capacity. They're talking about U.S. inflation rates of 1.2%. They also stated uh, capital expenditure. So many reasons they gave as to why this increase is happening at this time, just three months after they increased it. Uh, so in your opinion, Mr. Onojede, is this justified seeing that we are in the middle of a recession and Nigerians aren't having it easy regarding finances? Okay. Um, I, I hear you loud and clear. You see, part of what I was trying to describe earlier was how is this electricity pricing supposed to be arrived at in the first instance? The way it is arrived at is that there are certain variables. So there's a template, and there are certain variables that goes into determining what should be the price. So you have just some of those things that Kayamo was uh, listing where the variables, where some of the variables that goes into that template, let's assume for simplicity that it is not five or six variables, that it is only one variable. And that one variable is currency exchange rate. Automatically, when that currency exchange rate goes up, like you have a situation at some point when currency moved from 306 official rate to 360, it automatically means that that price will be adjusted at the agreed time for adjusting the price. That is how it is. You see, um, there's recession in the UK now, but you will not see UK uh, uh, electricity bill being adjusted outwards because there's a recession in the UK. Rather, what the government will do will be to look for how to push in the effect for the citizenry in other ways. The same thing in other parts of the world where there are currently recession. So, um, we may need to resist the, the temptation to go back to Egypt. Rather, look for how to soften the land for the people. Yeah, I'm guessing that's one of the reasons, you know, people would describe it as it's insensitive. It's not, you know, because, you know, Nigerians wouldn't understand that, yes, you know, certain factors uh, would determine and would lead to increments here and there. But if there is no... Um, um, uh, ways to cushion the effects of, you know, these increments, Nigerians will always describe it as insensitive. Uh, mostly, of course, because we're in a recession, the economy is bad, businesses have suffered lately, we're in a pandemic and all of that. Ms. Olojide, I'm sure, I don't know if you, you know, expect that there would be any ways that the government will cushion the effects of these increments. And second, do we ever get to see a time when the, you know, the exchange rates you know, become maybe a little less, and the rates of that we, Nigerians have to pay for electricity also are reduced. Uh, well, um, the, the the first question was uh, that because uh, it, it, it is tough. I, I, I've almost forgotten my my line of thoughts now. Um, the 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 factors. Okay, that will there be a way to push in it for Nigerians? Yeah. Do Why you expect? That that would happen. Yeah. yeah, I brought that up, that part of the discussion, because we may need to refocus the fight so that the fight is not for us to say, go back to subsidizing electricity. The right fight should be for us to demand for certain things that could help to push in the harsh effect of what is going on. So you can see that there's a change in that focus now. It's not go and reduce that electricity. Uh, what, the, what, what, the, what type uh, of things would you describe as, um, you know, ways that the government can help cushion the effects? Uh, well, go government has been doing a bit in the in the areas of giving concessionary finances to businesses. Um, they've been doing uh, a bit also in terms of uh, tax matters. Um, you have situation in which. Throughout the entire 2020, the government kept moving the pressure, the, the deadlines for people to file in their taxes and make payment on those taxes, shifting it forward almost continuously. So 
um, we, we need to make more demands in those spaces. Whatever it is that government can do, we're pushing it. Um, and we can also look at what other countries are doing. Like I, I make an example of the UK. There's recession in the UK or in most part of Europe. But you will not see them go back to say go and reduce electricity tariffs because of. In fact, government may even step in and make some payments on behalf of companies, for example, in those countries, rather than say go back and reduce that tariff. So you know, just quickly also address the the point you know, that I was trying to make. Whenever there is better you know exchange rate figures, you know, do we expect that the uh, electricity tariff would of course? It, it, incidentally, for us, um, a better exchange rate issue is it, not a microwave thing for us. It won't happen in a short term. There are a few things that we need to do. Um, I know CBN is trying to make certain steps. For example, you had in recent time things like uh, you are allowed to pay uh, all those money that is sent from abroad can be paid in foreign currency. It is to enable more people to be encouraged to send money home. And these are part of the things that will help to soften the ground a little bit. But for us to actually have a much better rate, it demands much more than those policies. And it's not available in a, in a, in a microwave fashion. It will take a bit of time. Hmm. Mr. Anojite, recall that in November 2020, the federal government, you know, began talks about exporting electricity to Chad, how they wanted to lessen Chad's uh, power supply burden. And now we see that, first of all, our electricity supply is erratic and it's even getting more expensive. So would you see this as an irony? Um, it, it would be, on the face of it, it's an irony. But... When, when you look at the technical side of that space, it is not out of place. The problem is that the generating uh, companies are generating this much electricity. The people that should take it off from them can take only so much. So if somebody has generated 10, the people that will take it off can only take five. What do you do with the remaining five? You cannot store it. So it is even better for us to have people outside Nigeria who we cannot float that thing that we cannot store. Offload it to them, let them pay for it. Hmm. Why we show up our own transmission and distribution capacity to be able to take what the generation companies are, are, are producing? And, oh. and right now, there's so much o opposition to this electricity tariff. Remember the other time there was so much protest, clamped down on protests even. Yeah. And uh, even the opposition party, the, in talking politics now, the PDP, have opposed this, describing it as a gift of New Year, of, of hike for the New Year uh, 2021. <laughs> Do you think if pressure continues to mount like this, the federal government is likely to backtrack on its, uh, on its hike in the electricity tariff? When, when, when we look closely at uh, how the last one played out, if you look very closely, you will see that it, it was just a talking show. Not much happened. Uh, the increase still happened. It happened. In this particular case, again, I foresee a situation in which labor might come into the place. There might be a threat of strike and all the all, all of those that come. Uh, but while that will come into play, I expect government to preempt this and be the one to even start the discussion so that the, the labor and other, other sectors, uh, everybody understand what is going on. And whatever we can do, like I said, my position will, be, will not be that we go back to subsidizing electricity. Rather, as we are going along the path of protecting the weaker uh, the, the lowest rung of the ladder, which is why you have uh, the band D and band E not affected at all by this increase. And uh, let's, let's, let's sustain this removal of subsidy and find other means to ease our pain. Mm. A lot of people may not even, you know, agree with the policy, you know, to exclude band D and E which are, of course, uh, described as low-income areas. Uh, some people would say, well, let everybody suffer for it. If uh, the exchange rate is going higher, you know, everybody should pay for it, uh, not just the, no, no, no. the expected um, you know, wealthier Nigerians. Um, um, so you know, quickly also speak on that, you know, why you know, it, it might be seen as unfair that it's only a select few that have to pay for whatever increments you know, that there, there exist. You know, I could as well just move to a 
low income neighborhood, right? Low income area, and uh, I, I, hope I, that I, I pay I less. I assure you, you would not, you would not do that. <laughs> you would, you would not do. So, um, so quickly speak on that. Thing, um, the, and and the also, way to, please go ahead. Just go ahead. The easiest way to reason that out is to consider pay, pay as you earn. Okay. Um, the the lower, lowest rung of the ladder needs help. And it is the duty of the people that are up there to carry them along. So the, the, the people up there carry a higher burden while the lower people carry a lower thing. It is just a fair thing to do in a society. And it's not a Nigerian affair. That is how it is in some other parts of the world as, as well. Okay. Mm. Uh, nicely put. I mean, it doesn't make it easier to accept, you know, for a lot of Nigerians because it's, it's really not, you know, and I, I remember what the, what the conversation um, was like when the first increment happened uh, three months ago, uh, where, you know, there was almost a hundred percent increment in power. You know, if you, whatever you bought for 5,000 Naira would now cost 10,000 Naira um, uh, um, units. And so it, it was painful for a lot of Nigerians to accept that as a new normal. Um, and I know that this would also not, you know, be easy. So, um, Ms. Alojide, like you mentioned, uh, things that can cushion the effects. Um, I hope that the Nigerian government actually does take those things seriously um, and not just continue to make these increments and turn the other, you know, turn face the other way. But, but Osarage, the NRC has said that from June 2021, electricity tariffs would go higher. I mean, you can't just imagine how, how much it would affect the millions of SMEs who rely on power to survive. We'll figure it out. Well, I'm allegedly, thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I'm not sure how are you even taking it. Let's start with you even. How are you taking the increment? Because you're one of those in the ABC bracket. Uh, how are you handling it? Uh, well, it's, it's not fun. Um, unfortunately, it's, it's, it's my wife that takes care of electricity. So oh, okay. uh, I will ask her how she's about. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make sure to have her on the show next time. <laughs> We should have invited <laughs> invited your wife on the show then. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Good again. morning to you. It's my pleasure. Thank you. All right. Stay with us here on The Breakfast. We are going to be talking next about COVID-19. The yes. uh, Nigerian government has approved that uh, gas oxygen plants be built in all states across the Federation. Um, and it's also a great way to get into the conversation about how serious it really is across Nigeria today. Stay with us here on The Breakfast. Good morning.